In the house, it's uh, Senator Chad McMahon. Good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, 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 Mississippi. Good morning. How's the how's the uh, the the family and the and the constituents in District Six? What's the big news from District 6? We're doing well in District 6. Uh, the heart of District 6 is Tupelo, Mississippi. Yeah. Economic activity, uh, new hotels going in, uh, new factories. There's going to be another. Uh, there's several several big deals that are about to be announced. You know, Lee County is the heaviest industrialized county in the state of Mississippi. The only other county that gives them any run for their money is uh, Jackson County, but they have one employer, Ingalls, that has 11,000 employees. You yep. take that out yep. of the mix, and we are we, do, I we dominate that. the manufacturing sector was, in this state. Was the thing that topped that over the blue, uh, the um, the Tupelo plant? I'm sorry, the uh, Toyota plant. Well, Toyota is not in Lee County, oh, Mississippi. Not, not no, that's that's correct. Huh. Uh, the Toyota plant was part of the Pool Alliance, right. which was really the brainchild uh, of several different people in that area. But uh, Three Rivers had a lot to do with that. Randy Kelly and David Rumbarger, they had a lot to do with that with that mega site uh, as far as manufacturing. And Toyota, um, Toyota has not done for us yet in terms of economic growth what Mercedes did for Tuscaloosa. But the, it is nope. on the verge of doing that. I'm predicting well, it, that, that... It takes time. Yeah, it, it does. And I'm predicting that we'll, we'll see... Um, <laughs> we will see real estate uh, increase another 20 25% in I, that county. I live not too far from the Nissan plant. Yes, sir. And, and I think everybody was expo- ex- expecting overnight explosion. And it took a while. But, boy, it's exploded. It has. And you got to give it 10 or 15 years, I think. And you, you just don't see it... Uh, that rapidly, but little by little, and now with the Amazon plant uh, out there nearby, not too far from there, it's going to be amazing. One other story from Tupelo that you may or may not be aware of, since we're doing Tupelo News, face masks <laughs> will be optional for Tupelo Public School District students beginning today, following a policy change approved by the district's Board of Trustees to shift criteria from lifting its mask mandates on Tuesday afternoon. The bar for lifting the mask mandate is having fewer than 5% of students and staff quarantined for a period of two weeks. So that is good news. Yeah, it's great news for the students. Yeah. All right. There are a multitude of things going on. Man, where do we start? You're on local and privates. For people who are not familiar with that uh, particular uh, committee, it is one. Anybody in the mayor or municipalities, they certainly are. To, to just kind of give us a little briefer on, on that committee. Well, the local and private committee is a constitutional, it's in the Constitution Mm -hmm. of Mississippi uh, uh, that it's established. And what it does is it basically gives exceptions to any city or county that wants to have a separate law from maybe general law in the state. Uh, uh, If you want to go outside the Constitution in a way, the Constitution gives the legislature the, the opportunity to do that, to craft some legislation specifically for an individual requesting that on a, I guess, county or municipality? That's correct. That That's correct. So uh, any any city or county that wants a special piece of legislation, mm-hmm. they get their representative or their senator to support it, and then they'll, they'll bring it to me in local and private, and we'll discuss it, and then I present it to the body, and the body has an opportunity to pass it in the Senate and send it to the House. And, and I have a wonderful colleague. My counterpart in the House of Representatives, mainly Barton, he and I have a wonderful relationship. Uh, we talk just about every day during session because yeah. a lot of legislation moves through that committee. When do they have to get those into that? I would, I was, I would think that that's something that you couldn't get in like the first month or something. You need to have that paperwork filed or at least request made early on during the summer or at least late summer. I think it's normally they can file any time up to about the th- last three weeks of session. Is that right? Yeah. It, mm. It's a broad window of opportunity for people to get their their local and private legislation. You is is in any way and please forgive me for bringing up medical marijuana but is any way the that's going to figure into your committee? Don't know yet. It it, it could yeah. at some point in the future a city or a county might want a special piece of legislation for medical marijuana. We don't know. We don't know what that's going to look like. Uh, the word from the uh, Senate is you guys are all uh, together on this one and uh, the votes are there to pass it when the governor calls it. That's my understanding. Senator Blackwell has worked really hard mm-hmm. to incorporate the I-65 features that were that were passed by the people of this state. Uh, Representative Lee Yancey 
I understand they have a an agreement. I've seen a draft of the bill. Mm-hmm. I've not seen the final bill. Anything in there that you you think is a deal breaker that you want in there? There were some things that I wanted in the bill that they considered and, and did place it in Such the bill. As? Uh, I wanted municipalities to have the option to to uh, create waivers to place dispensaries or production facilities or labs in certain areas. Mm-hmm. So zoning. That, zoning yeah. issues, yes, that was placed in the mm-hmm. bill. Uh, in, the, in the bill that you saw, did they address that? Yes, they okay. did. In addition, like an, another feature, something that I that I don't like is I'm I'm opposed to the excise tax, mm-hmm. and I think that's being worked that's being worked out as well. You you're opposed to excise tax at all, or just the amount of the excise tax? I'm opposed to morally. I'm opposed to all excise taxes, and the purpose for that, it's like if I was selling this water, if I'm mm-hmm. bottling this water, after I've bottled it. I owe a tax, an excise tax, just because I've bottled it. I'm not, there's been no transaction. Now, yeah. sales tax is a fair tax because once you, if I sell it, then it's tax. That's fine. But I don't like an excise tax, and the excise tax has been adjusted. So you is would, my understanding. So you would keep adjusted to what? Down some. I would have no excise tax. Yeah. If, 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 but but nobody gets everything <clears throat> they want in a bill. I understand and, that. And uh, I really mm-hmm. appreciate uh, Senator Blackwell mm-hmm. and Representative Yancey for working with me. To, to address some of those concerns. They've done a great job. The total on this was going to be what, uh, about 12% um, the, the, in the original, what we saw as far as this, the uh, the draft there? The draft that I saw, it had a 7% sales tax right. and a uh, $15 an ounce excise tax. $15 additional? $15. But th- I think that's been taken out of the bill. I've not seen the final draft, Gallo. Yeah. I'm, I'm sharing with you what I saw the draft that I saw had the had those features. You weren't on the study committee or any of that. I I, w- I did participate mm-hmm. in the study committee. Yes, sir. We had multiple hearings, and I want to say I appreciate the lieutenant governor for the work mm-hmm. uh, for the work he's done in this. He and his staff and the senators have worked hard. Uh, we've had multiple hearings on it. Three hearings, as a matter of fact, discussing just medical marijuana. We brought in experts from Michigan, from uh, Colorado. From Oklahoma, we allowed individuals here in the state to speak. Mm-hmm. And it, I learned a lot about the product itself in those hearings. I didn't know a lot about marijuana until those hearings. Has leadership uh, in the Senate come to you, or do you know, or have you heard, have you been in any conversations where they said, we'd, we'd love to be able to take the Medicaid expansion issue and team this, pair up and, and work with the House? Uh, to get medical marijuana, we would give them this if they would give us that. I, I don't know of any. I, I don't know of any deal. You like haven't that. been no, party sir. to that at all. Trey Lamar said he didn't hear. Of, uh, he no. hasn't seen it yesterday when he was he was no. on me. No, I haven't seen. Where anything are like those that. rumors coming from? I I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, we ta- no, nobody knows where rumors come from. Yeah, that's right. You know, we hmm. take an oath. Yeah. To, to, uh, we take an oath when we're sworn in, and, and no bill is supposed to be negotiated for another piece of legislation. So I, I don't believe that. That's just rumors. That's just people talking. The other part of that is this, as far as the medical, uh, medical, uh, I'm the, uh, uh, geez, Medicaid expansion. <laughs> uh, on the Medicaid expansion, uh, is that something that you guys are still actively working on? You know, the largest employer in my area is a regional hospital, mm-hmm. 10,000 employees. It's the largest economic driver. As a matter of fact, their payroll it's over half a billion dollars a year. I have to look at it from an economic side. I'm willing to discuss and look at what Medicaid expansion might look like because of the economics. I'm also willing to look at it because the it, currently in Mississippi, one out of three Mississippians are already on Medicaid. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. And I want world-class health care for all working Mississippians. You know, I'm a blue-collar guy. You know, I, I, I work in manufacturing. In my family, we didn't have insurance when I was a kid and I know what it's like to be afraid when you're a single mom or you're a young family or you're an elderly person and you don't have insurance Medicaid is not a welfare program Medicaid is a gov- is a minimum government insurance program for those that don't have I don't want to expand Medicaid to anyone unless they're working if you, you work, think the votes are there in the in the Senate 
to well, pass it? Well, no, not for something like that, but I, I want to have hearings on it, and I think we should have hearings. But I want to be clear. I'm not for expanding it, Medicaid to anyone who doesn't work. If you're working in Mississippi, mm-hmm. you should have access to affordable health care. Chad McMahon, that's his statement, Mississippi Senator District 6, Chairman of Local. 